Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda, the uh, Wind Waker, it's been years since I did that, uh, nearly said. Majora's Mask, in the last episode we defeated Twin Mold, the boss of the Stone Tower, and we've broken the curse on Ikana. Oh, spooky moon. Um, you wouldn't notice it necessarily, but it was a bit spooky and foggy before, and now it's not. And that's really... This one has very few changes uh, compared to some of the other areas after you've beaten the boss, but also this one needs to less, because the main change here is... We've freed the final giants, and we know what we need to do now. I think Tackle has made that very clear. Um, but we're not going to do that for a while. We've got some extra stuff to do, including the game's greatest side quest. Uh, I'm always loath to call it a side quest, because it's almost like its own main quest, really. It's quite... it's sufficiently complicated and is... I'm going to talk about it in a bit, anyway. Um, for now, do for, don't forget to do this before you've... you've um, before you reset the cycle, is deliver your final set of fairies. Oh, compassionate young one, I am the great fairy of kindness. Thank you for returning my shattered and broken body to normal. As thanks, I grant you the great fairy's sword. So, that's why the, this one wasn't on the visualizer, because it's the final, uh, like, holdable item in the game, the great fairy's sword. Set it to a button and use it. With black roses etched into it, the great fairy's sword is the most powerful of all blades. It's an unusual one, because you don't use it with B. It doesn't replace the gilded sword. It's an item you've got to hold, um, but it's bloody powerful. And that's the final great fairy done. Come see me whenever you are overcome by weariness. But yes, other than that, nothing changes in Ikana. Because there's, there's, I mean, there's no one to have dialogue with. There's only Pamela and her father who are in the same thing. The Gibdos surrounding the house are, are gone, obviously, for now as well. They'll, they'll be back if you reset time, because cause that's how this game works. Um, but there is one more thing we can do in Ikana for now. Um, I wonder. I noticed the water isn't flowing. It's like, is sharp. Now we've like, like cleared the curse, is Sharp still in there playing his death melody? I actually have no idea, he realises. I realise. But yeah, if you go in there, obviously now everything is back to normal. Pamela and her father are in there, but they have no idea who you are, and they don't really do anything either. What happens then if I play Song of Storms here? I've, just, I've genuinely never... I've genuinely just never, never explored this before. Nope. Cool. Ah, look. Well, that's that's interesting. Anyway, what we need to do now... Oh, no. Oh, I've become trapped. Oh, this isn't good. Um. Interesting. Have I bollocksed myself? That can't be a thing, surely. I'm going to try turning into a fish, because he's bigger, so he's got a slightly higher reach. There we go, he can get out. Whew! That was a scary moment. I thought I'd completely trapped myself. I was trying to think back to the last time I saved, if I just have to turn off and on again, and then realised that's as far back as the beginning of Stone Tower Temple, and... Oh, it's doing the thing, because I'm technically out in Termina. Oh, no. It's bizarre that it does this, and I don't know why it does. Well, while we're waiting, might as well shoot the idiot out of the sky. Ah! Fuck off. With light arrows, no less. Oh! Dawn of the final day. 24 hours remain. So yeah, you got nice blue sky and clouds here. I mean, it would be blue sky if it wasn't first thing in the morning. Um, nice views of the ancient castle, I suppose. Um, but like all the other areas, this area also now has the main term in a field music, which is quite cool. What we need to do is head down into the river. I'm going to miss. No, I'm fine. And we actually need to swim up river. Fortunately, I've still got the infant magic on because it's still the same cycle that we turned on the old... What's it called? Um, what is it called? Um, Shadow Romani. There we go. Oh, fishing out there failed completely. Anyway, if we hop up, this, this is one we could have come to before, but also not. This is... The secret shrine behind the waterfall. Now awaiting the challenges of bold visitors, sure of their might. He 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 he. And the final thing I'm going to bring out is our little item we got, the Great Fairy Sword. So yes, it goes onto a button, and you draw it with that button rather than B. It's bizarre, and then you swing it by using that button, so I'm using Y here. But it's got an extra level of power on top of the Gilded Sword, which is great. Um, so two things you need to actually get in here. First off, you need to have the Light Arrow, so you need to have beaten Stone Tower Temple. And secondly, you need at least 16 heart containers in total. Um, as in, like, um, those ones down there. So I got the four from beating um, the, 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 the dungeon bosses. 
Um, and then on top of that, then you need an additional 12, which means you need 12 times 4, which is 48 heart containers. So you need to have got most of the hearts, the pieces of heart in the game in order to actually get to this. Oh, and it's this freak again. <laughs> it seems somehow you have managed to send Akana's wandering spirits to peaceful rest. But outside of Akana, there are still swarms of wandering spirits with lingering regrets. The ones in this room want to meet you again and have been waiting here for quite a while. Go see them if you feel like it. I'm sure they'll welcome you. So, the deal here is we got four rooms, if you look on the map at the bottom, and, oh, overshot that a bit. Four rooms, each of which contains four very specific enemies. So first is a Dinofoss. We fought these guys first back in Woodfall Temple, and they don't put up much of a fight to the Great Fairy's Sword. Single hit, oh, yep, that's it. Single hit will kill each one of them. Now, from this, we get a... Oh, I bought this. I've got this up slightly. We get a silver rupee. Um, and I realised I meant to return to the bank before doing this. So, I wonder if I return to the bank and then come back again. Do I lose my progress? Oh, well, it's not like they're difficult to fight. Let's find out. Long story short, I suppose the answer is yes, because it's marking me as bin in that room and there's no chest present there, so I suppose I just have to beat all of them. So... Look who it is! It's a Wizrobe! It's one of the last ones in the game, but it's still irritating, but at least this one is here for a th reason that thematically makes sense. Um, because this one is... The first one, that was the mini-boss of Woodfall Temple. Here, this guy is... Ah, and this is the mini-boss of Snowhead Temple. You basically have to fight the four mini-bosses of the four temples. Fortunately, this guy, each of his phases will die to a single stroke of the Great Fairy Sword. It's very useful. Right, if he appears somewhere useful here, then he is going to have a bad time. Oh, he is. <laughs> that at least is satisfying how quickly you can rinse this guy. Right, let's over to room number three. See if you can cash your minds back to the boss of Great Bay Temple. Uh, okay, there are too many bosses technically for each one, so... Um, but it's not going to be the frogs, because the frog things, when you kill them, turn into frogs. And they're now in Don Giro's Frog Choir. Though they're not at the moment in this cycle, but yes. Over to the third room. And yes, it's time for a rematch with... What? So if you remember how we fight this guy, we first get underneath him and just do an ass ton of quick spins. The Great Fairy Sword does have a longer reach than a standard sword, and as such is more useful for doing spin attacks. It doesn't really matter for damage against um, these jelloid blobs, because uh, they all just die in one hit anyway. But having the extra reach just means you will potentially get more of them in any one spin. Once we've cleared enough off him, we should be able to have a good shot at him. Uh, let's see. Oh, his eyes closed at the moment there, which isn't helpful anyway. Oh, there it is. It's open. And boink! Oh, shit bags. There we go. They all fuck off him now, um, and we just need to keep an eye on him, really. They're just an irritant and stealing my frames. Uh, well, it's not even stealing my frames, it's just there's a slight dilla- Oh! I did I just get him? Fuck, did he die in one Great Fairy hit? Nice! As you can see, Great Fairy Sword plus Night Arrows makes a lot of old mini-bosses bloody easy now. And a lot of old bosses. Remember, you can go back and fight any of the old, um, like, full-on Adolwa, Gert, Georg, Twin Mold bosses again, and most of them are easier now you've got the uh, Great Furry Sword. Twin Mold, of course, is not, because Twin Mold you don't use your sword in, you just use arrows, and then you wail on him as Giant Lake, and unfortunately, yeah, nothing makes that faster or more powerful. Finally, one we've just fought, the old Garrow Master. So the trick here, as ever, is dodge, then he'll fuck off into the ceiling, then he hops down, and then kill him. Oh, does he not die in one? Oh, that's slightly it's sad. Shielding, by the way, don't work um, when you use the Great Furry Sword. Um, because you bring your sword up like that, but that doesn't actually block shit. Um, oh, he's going to drop a bomb. Yep, there we go. And with that, we can get our final. 100 quid. You can see why I wanted to deposit stuff before we'd done this, because, yeah, we've still got to get our bank balance up to 500 quid, and I think it's on something in the 2,500 region. And I've been trying to gather money as the game goes on. It's almost impossible to get that up without some form of grinding, I've found. <laughs> you really are an amazing person, Doctor. It seems you've somehow managed to heal their souls. Maybe I shall vanish soon myself. Well then. <laughs>
and he promptly vanishes. But yeah, like, I've been trying to bank wherever I can. I've been not going out of my way to grind rupees at any point, but gathering them quite a lot. And I've, by the time I finish this, everything I want to in the game, I'll probably have got to about three and a half or four thousand. In a normal playthrough, it just seems impossible to get that accidentally. But hey, that gets us a new heart container, crosses off Vanquished Foe's Return. And now it's time to begin something. It's time to begin the most complex side quest in the game. And it's a fascinating one, because it's all about lore and stuff like that. And I've always said in games, dungeons are meant to test you. They test what you've learned in the game so far. This is a massive series of side quests. It's not a dungeon, but it's testing you. What it's testing you is, have you sufficiently explored the game world? Have you spoken to enough people? Have you figured out enough information to put this whole quest together? And that's fascinating. I've known no other game to do anything like that, but basically is a, is a side quest that just entirely relies on, like, how much... How well do you know the side characters in it? And that's what the Cafe and Anjou side quest is all about. It takes an entire cycle to do, and a lot of things happen at very specific times throughout the entire cycle. So... I'm going to play the Song of Time, I'm going to go back to the... No, that's not the right one. I'm going to go back to the dawn of the first day, and I'm going to slow time down. Because I want precision with time. And I will see you in West Clockdown at... No, East Clockdown even, at 10am sharp. So, the first thing we notice is Gorman going in there. He does this at precisely 10am on the first day. And we're actually going to meet a character through here we've not met before, and she's the one who starts the quest off. If we go down to this right-hand room here, the left room is the mayor, the right hand is the mayor's wife. A lady by the name of Madame Aroma. She's the mayor's wife, she's the head of the post office, and she's also the head of the carnival organisation committee. She's here speaking to Toto, who tells us, oh, Are the Finns damp lately? That's the greeting used among us, Zora. Oh, forgive me, and he introduced himself as the manager in the Indigo Do Goes, and we know this. But, they said, um, you'll be able to hear it if the show wasn't cancelled, it's such a shame. But talking to Madame Aroma starts this whole quest line off. Oh dear me, are you on a field trip? Or are you the expert person finder I hired? Yes, 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 I dare say you have the face of a pro. The characteristics of the person I want you to find, yes, I know them. The person I want you to locate is my son, Cafe. You know him, don't you? You don't? Really? He disappeared about a month ago. It's terrible. I'm so very worried I can't get food down my throat and I've lost five pounds. You haven't anything that you haven't though? You haven't anything though? Oh dear. Well, could you look for him? <laughs> oh my, of course. You are an expert. Well, I'm counting on you. And she gives us Cafe's mask. You've been given Cafe's mask and re re been recruited to locate a missing person. Wear this to inquire about the missing cafe. So this starts, there's like three or four quests that go along with this one, but this starts the first one, Madame Aroma's Search. Madame Aroma asks you to find her missing son. And this gives us Madame Aroma, and tells us that she is here on the first and second days in the office. The mayor's wife and one of the most influential people in town, she's in charge of the carnival and the post office. So first off, if we start our investigations in here, there's this back room. And the useful thing in here is behind this curtain. There is this diary here. This is Café's diary, no less. Café's diary. The wedding ceremony is soon. It might be early, but I finished my wedding mask. I wonder if Anju has made hers. She tends to do things but the last minute, so probably not. There is a gathering of the fellows at the milk bar tonight. I plan to show off my wedding mask and talk about my sweetheart as best I can. We heard about Anju getting married from Creamia, the, uh, the ranch owner, and now we know and Café is the one she was going to be married to. Oh, yet he has disappeared. Next, we need to stay in here. So there's various optional things I'm going to do. Actually, most of what I do for the rest of this episode is going to be optional, but it's all important scene setting. What we need to do is wait until 11 o'clock and then come back into this room. Unless he's going in there now. He is. Gorman has a meeting with Madame Aroma, so let's just hopefully he speeds up a little bit. So there's various conversations you can witness that start setting the scene for various other other events. And they all happen at very specific times, and I'm going to go through them in one cycle so it's all in the right order. Um, but when we get when Gorman approaches here, at 11 o'clock, just about... Madame Aroma, I am Gorman. It has been some time. Thank you for letting us perform at this year's carnival of time. Oh dear me, Gorman. There's a problem. Meaning? The opening performance I've asked you to do... 
Ah, yes. They've cancelled just now. What's this? Allow me to explain. Oh, excuse me, I am to work at this year's show, or that was the plan. I am Toto, manager of the Zoraban, the Indiegogos. He arrived this morning. Naturally, there's been an unusual incident in Great Bay, and due to this unusual accident, Lulu, the diva at the Indiegogos, has lost her voice. Why? Why? The details are quite long, so I'll spare you. At any rate, I must cancel our performance at this year's Carnival of Time. See? And this means the Gorman Troop's job is... It's off. B but that's... That's all, Gorman. The law is always next year. I'm busy with other matters. So this is where you can learn A, that there's stuff going funky in Great Bay with Lulu, and B, this is the point after which Gorman becomes depressed and we have to do a lot of the stuff with his mask and with Toto in the milk bar. And you can see all that kind of starting off there. It's just, I thought I'd show it while we're here. What I actually need to do is we need to head... A lot of this takes place, so Anju, uh, Cafe's... What's the word for wife-to-be? Fiancé. And... And her... Um, oh, we can see the postman running around, by the way. He's important to this. Um, so Cafe... And Anju, the, the Cafe's fiancé, is obviously fairly important to this. And she and her mother work the stockpot in together. And her grandmother we've already spoken to, she told us stories. So we'll be in, the, in about... Oh, that's a strange shot. We'll be in and about the stockpot in quite a lot. And god, this coal quest is made so much easier by the fact that the Song of Double Time skips to specific hours rather than only be able to skip forward to the next night or next dawn. Holy shit, that made this very time consuming in the N N64 game. You just had to do a lot of waiting. Anyway, inside, we will find at the end here in the kitchen isn't here. Okay, I guess I've got to go straight into here. So, Anju's is presenting food to her grandmother. And we can listen in on that conversation. Oh, Tortoise, I've already had lunch. Grandmother, I am Anju. Tortoise was my dad. And you haven't had lunch yet. I've already had lunch. Now be quick and take that away. Not eating is bad for you. Please eat. Didn't I say that I already ate lunch, Tortoise? Impossible child. Then don't eat my food. I give up. Whew. Phew? Uh, would you like me to read you a story? So that gives us a tiny bit of Andrew's schedule um, that she's in feeding her grandmother at this point on the first day, the only daughter of the Stockpot Inn's caretaker. She's a little timid, but very sweet and polite. We can also get a bit of background on what's going on here. You might be able to figure it out, but if we read her diary, Granny's Diary. It was my I told my uh, it was my granddaughter who cooked again today. Putting that to the lips shortens the life. I thought of a way to get by without eating. I'll try it tomorrow. I just hope I'm not caught. That's pretty fucked up, pretending to be senile to avoid having to eat your granddaughter's cooking. Good lord. Anyway, what we need to do here now is use for the first time our new cafe's mask to inquire, and what better line of inquiry to start with than Anju, his fiance. She'll come back out to the desk at about 1pm. Unfortunately, you can't use the song of passing in here, uh, song of double time, you've got to be outside for that. There she is. So she has to be at the front desk here, which you can, well, I guess she's a little bit late, but either way, speak to her with Cafe's mask on. Oh, that mask. You too. You're also looking for Cafe. Dear Cafe, where has my beloved gone off to? I just hope he's safe. Even a single letter would put me at ease. I need to know he's okay. Every day, starting at noon, I wait for the postman to bring me good news, but... And this is a thing, if in order to see this event, you could basically spend the day following the postman around and see what he goes then, but we can avoid that by saying he comes here at precisely two o'clock. There's a lot of following the postman that I'm not going to show because it's just tedious, but there's a lot of basically delivering letters in this quest and then watching him pick up the letters and seeing where he takes them to try and piece things together. Obviously you can piece the information together over as many cycles as you want, but it only happen you only have to do everything in one cycle. <gasps> oh, what's this? Here you are, today's mail. Uh, wait. This letter, where did you- From the post box. Th that's not what I meant, from the post box where? From the post box somewhere. That's not what I mean! Unhelpful postman, I guess he's bound by the postman's code. Please tell me. It's a secret. I must know. But if you then speak to Andrew again with Cafe's mask on, she doesn't say anything different. But yes, we've got a bit of information there. She's now received a letter from Cafe. And she'll say this time, I have a request. Cafe, I have a clue that will help you find him. Tonight at 11.30, come to the kitchen. We'll talk then. And this gives us 
Anju's Anguish. As you can see, a couple of parallel quests that go on here. We got fi one final thing, well, two technically final things to do now. If you remember, bring up our ongoing events, there's various rumoured events, and one of these is important. This one here. It seems a Goron called the Doctor stayed at the Stockpot Inn. That Goron, called the Doctor, comes by to claim his room reservation around 4 o'clock. We could be a real shit and steal the reservation from him. As long as you speak to Andrew as a Goron before 4 p.m. on the first day. Welcome to the Stockpot Inn. Um, are you wanting to stay the night? Yes. Oh, hello, you must be the Goron checking in today. Welcome. Let me just confirm your reservation real quick. One moment, please. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Goron. Oops, I mean Mr. Doctor. Welcome to our humble inn. Your room is the Knife Chamber. What a horrifying name. On the second floor, here's your key. And so she gives us the room key. This will not travel back in time with you. You're not sure why, but apparently you had a reservation. Um, the room key will not travel back in time with you, but for this cycle it will be very useful because it lets you... It not only opens the room, but also means we have a front door to the stockpot in. And it's... there. You, technically you can go in through the roof anyway, but... It's better to go in the proper way, because they lock it at night to anyone who is not a guest. But we are now, which is great. This is the knife chamber, and nothing in it seems to really give it that... make it deserve that name, but it does come with a complimentary... 100 quid on the house, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, this doesn't come without its... moral consequences. So, if we fast forward to 4pm... We see a Goron turning up. You'll recognize this as Dr. the Goron from Majora's Mask. He still shares your name in the parallel world of Termina, but this time he is a traveling Goron. And, well, we get to see a slightly humorous but also sad, and you sh we should feel bad for what we've done here at Exchange. I'm terribly sorry, there are no ba vacancies today. We're booked solid with reservations. I made a reservation. The name is Dr. Goro. Mr. Dr. Goro? I don't have a reservation under that name. There's one close to that, but... What? Really, Goro? Well, it's nice weather, so I'll just sleep outside, Goro. I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, he just has like a speech impediment where he says Goro at the end of occasional words. She misheard that as his name, and there's ne and it never flags that we came and stole his reservation entirely. You really don't have it, Goro? I really don't have it. Really, Goro? I'm terribly sorry. God, we should really feel bad about that. But we're going to hold it together. Hold it together? Hold it there for this episode. So, we've explored the last little bits of stuff in Akana we can do, and now we've started the game's final and most important side quest. To start the side quest, by the way, you have to have pretty much got to, if not beaten Akana, for reasons you'll see at the end, but I tend to leave this to right at the end for a number of, of reasons. Next episode will be entirely working our way through the Café and Anju side quest, and I hope you'll join me then. It's wonderful. Thank you very much, and good day.